That plan to use Keno as a way to raise revenue has always been controversial here in Connecticut. And now that the budget seems to be in a little better shape, depending on whom you speak with, uh, the House Speaker, the Senate President, and others have been calling on the state to repeal the game before it takes effect. That's right. We're joined now by former Congressman Robert Steele. He's a Republican from Eastern Connecticut, served in Congress from 1970 to 74, and has witnessed the birth and the growth and the impact of Connecticut's casinos. And State Representative Tony Wong, Republican from Fairfield Trumbull area, a member yes. of the Public Safety and Security Committee, which oversees gambling. Thanks to both of you for being here. Sure, and I guess you. the first question is, we're all hearing about all this to do with everybody distancing themselves from, oh, I didn't bring up, I wasn't behind Keno. I mean, what are we to make of that? I mean, does it matter? Well, I think what we make of it is there's been such growing opposition to it that I think uh, the governor and others have thought better of it because we do have a state election coming up in November. But, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that uh, we've now had 23 of the last 24 months that uh, gambling revenue has been down in Connecticut. The slot revenue has been down. <clears throat> and uh, we've got more and more pressure now to try to replace that revenue with more gambling. Uh, and Keno was the first effort at it. So this is a big deal that, that, that we're able to repeal Keno. And the hope is, I think both Tony and I are very, very hopeful, that it will also have an impact on slowing down the movement toward video slot uh, casinos, which, of course, are now increasingly on the table, and uh, Internet gambling as well. Do you, uh, I wonder if you feel that the, the, the move now to repeal Keno is more, has more to do with the fact that we have this uh, big surplus uh, that we're, we're hearing about, the half-billion-dollar surplus, or is it like people are starting to think as, as a policy matter that we shouldn't be doing this? Well, I think Bob deserves tremendous credit. He has been advocating against this issue for over a year and a half since it's been implemented uh, in, the, in the omnibus budget bill. Mm -hmm. um, and... and and I'm happy to report that uh, on Tuesday of this week, we actually had a public hearing to address this issue, virtually for the first time since 2011, to really have a public input in, in regards to whether Keno is a proper way for us to generate revenue in our state. And I'm happy to say that I'm really not as concerned about who originated the idea. I'm just happy that the wisdom has come to the minds of our leaders and the governor speaker and the president pro tem to say that Keno is not a good idea. Now, what came out was was a bit interesting in the testimony. We had Frank Farriker, who is the, um, the chief of the board of, of the Connecticut Lottery. One of the things that raised a real concern to me was the fact that he, he advocated an aggressive expansion plan of where the lottery is a revenue source, a growth revenue source for our state, which begs a philosophical question that I am pondering is the fact, plain and simple, should the state of Connecticut be in the business of promoting regulated gambling as a revenue source? And I think that is one that if you pose to the public and asking them that question, there should be a debate on the issue. Because I think when we think of lottery, we think of it very benignly as yeah. a static sheet that you get a reaction. But the reality is addiction afflicts people in that area. Yeah, people addiction play lottery, they go on to other things. And, and, and when we talk about video slot machines, I think Bob mentions a book, and he elaborated a little bit more in regards that the hypnotic nature of, of videos that our young children have been in, in, attracted to mm -hmm. is something that is very insidious in regards to building addiction and truly prying money from our well-earned taxpayers. You know, Al, you, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> is this uh, uh, brief surplus that we have the reason that, uh, that some of our leaders are backing off. Uh, I think that uh, that is a phony argument. It's a phony argument because the fact of the matter is, if we put Keno in, it will be in forever. Mm. It's not something to cover a two-year you know, hole in a budget. Moreover, we don't have a surplus in the state. We've got a brief budget surplus, but the fact of the matter is, Connecticut today is $52 billion They're in debt. debt. Yeah. That's a long-term debt. And uh, there is no way we'd get rid of Keno if we don't get rid of it now. Right. I was going to say, I mean, we're always going to have a need for, for money, frankly. But, you know, something I've been curious always about is, I mean, are there hard statistics um, about the number of families, say, who have had financial trouble or gone bankrupt after post 
casinos? Well, we know in Connecticut, for example, that uh, the Connecticut, the state of Connecticut, sponsored a study in 2009, and the study uh, the study showed that uh, since the two casinos in Connecticut had opened, there had been a 400 percent increase in the number of arrests for embezzlement in oh. Connecticut. Not embezzlements, but arrests for embezzlement. A rate of increase uh, for a rate of increase that actually is 10 times the national average. Wow. The number of arrests in southeastern Connecticut for embezzlement has been so great that a columnist for the New London Day described southeastern Connecticut as the embezzlement capital of America. Uh, I got to ask you about this uh, new thing that the task force on video slots came up with in January. They, you know, they're proposing 2,500 machines in each of the three off-track betting parlors in Connecticut. Is there, is there any actual bill that's out there? On that? No, and that is really a note of concern is we, we've gone through the legislative process of a task force in January. It's been proposed, but there's been no legislative action. But I hate to be a reminder of the history of how we've enacted bills in the legislature. There was no public deliberation of Keno before it was oh. inserted as well. I think we have to be very sensitive of a last-minute issue. But Bob bring up the socioeconomic impact of gambling. We always talk about revenue. We always talk about revenue and, and fixing our deficit issue, and, and, and everybody else is doing this across the country. Connecticut may lose in this. But one of the things is March is National Problem Gambling Awareness Month. Mm. And one of the things that was brought up by the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling is for all the millions that we gain from gambling, Gambling. There has been scant money spent on counseling, support, and we haven't had a significant gambling research study since 2009. How many lives have been ruined in silence that we don't account for? How many of those people whose lives get impacted from the money that they spent that we gain as a state fall back onto the state's dole and account responsibility that we don't measure? So it may be, I hate to be ironic, but the mirage of gambling is there's always that lure of the big payday. Mm -hmm. I hope we as a state don't get drawn into that anymore and, and end up failing miserably on the backs of the people that, that count on us to lead properly. All right. Well, we'll have to see where it, where it goes uh, this session. Thank you very Thank much, you. Bob Steele. Thanks very and, much. Uh, Representative Wong. Thank you very Congrats. much.